PartyPoker.net World Open 4. This is poker at its best. There is over $500,000 in the prize pool. The winner gets a massive quarter million dollar check. The race is on. Should go put the other shirt on. Sammy on the aces. <laughs> Finally get some respect. That's how it should be. Men and boys, men and boys. A spot at the semifinals is up for grabs. And for our runners up, there is a second chance to get back in it in the turbo round. They must play their best. That's winning. Yeah. They must give it their all. Go on, Boff. Bosh them in. And they must pray that Lady Luck is on their side. Thank you, Lord. What chance? Yeah. yeah. Tonight, another heat kicks off with a supreme lineup. Andy Greekfish is known for a bit of banter at the felt. Knocked out in the heat stages of every TV tournament. Could this be his turn to snatch that pole position win and crack the TV table? Six televised tournaments, my best starting hand has been pocket nines, and you can check all the tapes on that. So God willing, today is my day. Willie Hawkey from Glasgow has only been playing poker for two years. He knows the poker stats and facts, but can he win big and get in the money? My strategy today in the game will be to take things easy, maybe for the first half hour, try and suss out some of the people there, and maybe then change gears, and hopefully I'll get the cards that allow me to do that. Actor Ross Boatman, former London's burning star, adores a tasty game of poker. He was in the West End hit Dealer's Choice, but tonight, Will he be playing the part of a successful poker player? I've just arrived back from Las Vegas and I'm jet lagged. I don't know what day it is, what's happening. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm without feeling at the moment. Hopefully, when I've won this heat, I'll be very excited. Simon Zack is part of that Blackpool poker mob. He has had great results in this format and made the final table in the UK Open 3. He isn't scared of going all in with nothing. To win a tournament like this is obviously fantastic and I've played eight or nine of them now and uh, made one final and it's time that I should be winning one really, yeah, it'd be fantastic. The legend, Dave Garbatz, has been playing poker since he was 11 years old. His biggest poker win was 50k in a cash game. He's no pushover. Played in a number of tournaments now, went to the World Series in Las Vegas last year. Uh, played in a few of these TV tournaments, um, as yet yet to really uh, taste the sweet smell of success. Agnieszka Ryland, she knows how to put up a fight. She's a former boxing world champion, and she won't be easy to knock out tonight. I feel very good today. Um, I don't know, I, my strategy for today is survive and go to the final title. Looks like a wide open lineup, but is it? Always good to talk to someone who knows. Joining me and commentating with me as well, Neil Badbeat Channing. And Neil, congratulations, you are in the semifinals. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. What do you think of this lineup? Uh, yeah, this is a very interesting heat, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly keen to see Simon Zack today. You make him the favourite? I think Simon Zack's the favourite. Uh, he's a player that always kind of, uh, I, th I always think he's a, you know, doing a lot of good things, but I can never really figure out what he's doing. I want to see his cards now. Well, what about some underdogs? Uh, do you know this Willie Hockey? Uh, Willie Hockey, yeah. He, he went deep in the Irish Open, which uh, some idiot managed to win. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't play against him in that, but I did speak to him a little bit throughout. And... Uh, he went straight to Monte Carlo. He's got the bug for poker at the moment. He won a tournament there. So, yeah, he can definitely play poker. Couple more in there. Greek Fish, Agnieszka, and Dave Garbatz, who you know very well. Uh, yeah, Dave's been playing a lot. I, th I think his game's coming on. Uh, he's, I know he's really excited about today. I, I spoke to him uh, a couple of days ago, and he's looking forward to this. Agnieszka, uh, I spoke to her about her poker and also her boxing, and uh, she tells me she wins all her fights by knockouts, and, and that's basically how she plays poker as well. Well, she'll have a big right arm, but the Greek fish will be trying to lay them all out as well. Punching bags on the felt, the yellow chips worth a thousand, blues are two, reds 5k a piece, and they're wobbling 100,000 per player, 600k in play. Nice little lineup here, Neil. And uh, 
He's just been telling me some stories about Dave Race, Garbas. 6, I mean, you, he is a gambler from way back you know, in, in the early days. Before he done it, you know? Yeah, I used and to work in the, the yes. industry. And uh, Dave Garbas was, like me, one of the real forerunners of that industry. Yes. And uh, he was a legendary Pass. character. Come I mean, on, he, and I'll give you a spin. This man's wow. been a millionaire. I'm not quite sure what he is at the moment. How's his poker game? Uh, he's been playing a lot more uh, in the last couple of years. He loves poker, uh, <laughs> absolutely loves it, and uh, yeah, he's he's improving. Um, you know, I used to think he was uh, kind of weak. He's a smart guy, you know, and uh, I know this means a lot to him. He's he's, he's really looking to do well Six. today. Six thousand. Cool. Leave me alone. What's going on really here? Not. I mean, Zach, the no fluff went check check, and I'll check. Ross is doing check. very well to lose the minimum here no, no. if he can yeah, maintains this, the check no, call. This pair up on the river is not really well, great for like Ross. It. I think well, he, like uh, he feels like he has to call now. Got a queen. Nice That's good. But um, I mean, hasn't he hasn't he done so very Ross well? Would you have gotten a little busier there? Yeah, would you just um, fold before sorry, the flop was an option? Actually, to be honest, I I think fold before the flop was a good option. He makes them once and all the fuses went in the studio and they're locked in this little room for three hours. Blinds up to two and four thousand now. Leave that one. What time's it going? Seven forty-five. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Time. Know what's this will be over four o'clock. Good latest. luck charm Dave Garbacha's got on his chips. Very late. Like a muskrat. It depends on the way you're going. Yeah, I've seen that one before. Um, I'm raising. Raise. Six. Josh Tyler's shark. Oh, sorry, I thought they went up. Sorry. Raised to 8,000 total. Plus. Plus. Raised to 8,000. And this is the second time Greekfish has had the 710 suited. Cool. The second time he's raised with it, and the second time he's gotten called by Simon Zach with the better hand. I'm going to be very careful about what I say about Greekfish in this pot. I don't want him to get upset in any way. I think it's a good flop for Greekfish, though, so far. Check. Thought the flush draw last time. This is the flush, and why not bet it right out, right? See what, how big you can make. You can't make a big pot unless you bet it. That's cool. true. And Simon uh, doesn't believe him straight away, and of course he got that nine of hearts, which he didn't know whether that's going to be any good. Say on there. I'll show you. This could be dangerous for Simon Zach. I mean, Greeks bearing gifts. Check. How should he be thinking about this? It's a message to That's my probably friend. a bad card for Simon Zach on the turn. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> if he thought he was in front on the flop, and he probably wasn't sure, uh, he's more yeah, likely yeah, to think he's lad. in front now. Well, I think Greece, he's, he's checking to keep yet. the pot small, yeah. Simon Zach, with the intention of calling on the river, I think. Check. Check. He's That's now almost certainly going to call because he, he thinks that Greekfish uh, can easily bet with an ace here. <sighs> I think I think he's going to call, and I think he has to call. Um, on, I'll pay you. Cool. Flush. Nice. One. A queen. Mm. Queen. Did you have a queen? A queen. A queen. Well, we've had some perspective, Neil and I. And I love this hand because I think it's very instructional from someone who's fast a rising star of this tournament, Andy Greekfish. I mean, how, uh, there was a lot of things he did that were unorthodox that hand. I, I liked his play of this hand very much, actually. I think he played it really well. We, we've talked in some of the other hands about when people flop a really big hand, like flopping a flush, the, their natural instinct is always to check it. And I like the way Andy bet out. He's creating a big pot. He knows Simon Zach's an aggressive player, and he's got a chance of getting all of his chips here. Uh, so I love his bet on the flop. Now, I couldn't see myself being able to check that turn. So, I mean, what kind of things do you have to think about that will allow you to make that sort of play that Greekfish made? I, I think his check on the turn is brilliant. I really, I really like that. I think it's definitely the right play. He knows Simon Zach's a very aggressive player. If he checks the turn, he's giving Simon a chance to bluff now. And, and he's selling the idea that he hasn't got a very strong hand. It makes him so much more likely to get paid off on the river. And when the board double pairs like that, and now an ace is quite a common card for Andy to hold, it means that Simon's almost certainly going to pay him off on the river. Which is why the one small criticism of the way Andy played the pot, he probably could have been a bit more, been a bit more greedy on the river. And so the big factor is if you think your opponent has a hand that can pay off nothing. Absolutely, yeah.
Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open for still a full table of six. Willie Hockey well, and Dave Garber haven't had too much to say so far. I'll Dave, show you Dave's because I don't really think there's anything to do with you. Uh, he's normally one to get involved in banter and laughter. I, I'm a little surprised to see My him. My friend Neil Channing there is everyone. Can't be really nice about that, can you? Not what you can do. Really Channing's a lovely guy, I mean. Fantastic player, very good looking, very witty. Fine young man. Cool. Greek fish, and, Greek fish and I are announcing Plus. our engagement <laughs> at the end Plus. of this week. God, <laughs> come on, give me the end now. Appreciating. Is, is Ross a little trigger Plus. happy here? He's a... Uh, Plus. Plus. He's raised it up. Quick call by Simon Zach behind. And actually, I mean, Ross would be pretty happy to be seeing this flop, even. Maybe. Yeah, not. I don't mind the call from Simon. There's no need to get too busy with a nice queen at this stage. He has position. Uh, he, he's pretty sure he has the best hand. Not a great flop for him, though. 12, Same bet. Simon's thinking, geez, I mean, I just can't be keep calling these flops, can I? Cool. <laughs> Will that slow Ross up? Well, that's obviously Simon's plan. He thinks if he can pick up a spade, an ace or a queen, uh, he's going to start to play the hand aggressively. And uh, if Ross seems to slow down, maybe he can <coughs> steal it from him later. I think if Ross makes a big bet here, Simon will pass. And he's going all in, so I think Simon obviously must pass. pass. That's a strong opinion Ross had, and he's right. Yeah, so I like the I like the play by Ross. Um, I just want to give himself a difficult uh, question there. And no more fake. He doesn't put Simon on the king. Simon would have raised on the flop for the king. <laughs> well, the first one cheap, is it? No one. For sure. Very naughty, I've got to say. Likely. Wow. And Ross back in it, what? I think. I think there's all a all theory in the Bokin family him. generally that people don't call pre flop raises with uh, oh, hands with what the king. I believe in that actually quite and, uh, There's that. a lot to be said for that, actually. Uh, experienced players like Simon <laughs> Zach, um, <laughs> if they have a hand as good as King Queen, they take a view and re raise. And if they have a, a forehand like King 10, they don't bother playing it. So I think he felt like he didn't have a king there. Oh, uh, Stuart's uh, inquiry, sorry. Right. Angus put chips in the pot. I'm not sure about <laughs> this, you know. I don't want a hand now, you know. I don't want to pass with no look. I have to have respect though, you know. But I like you, so. Cool. Well, she just limped in with the ducks. And uh, obviously, being her first pot she played, I mean, she could have got away with the raise if she wanted to, couldn't she have? Maybe she's, she, she's just Check. looking to Check. sort of, Check. rather than take the blinds, make Check. a big pot if possible. Yeah, I don't think Agnushka's plan is to get too involved until mm. perhaps the 3-6 blind level. Um, not quite sure why she's deviated with the deuces. I checked. Check. Hockey. Uh, Check. Check. Very Check. interested, if not, not actually winning at this stage. Check. Check. That was a good card. I don't know much about uh, Celtic football, but he he was quite quite big in the whole game, wasn't he? Yeah, I don't know exactly. I, I, people have told me that Willie Hockey used to own Celtic. I know he's a big Celtic fan. He goes to the game, and uh, he's definitely Celtic through and through. Uh, I think he's still a shareholder. I, I'm not sure whether he's actually the owner of the club anymore, but uh, right, he's certainly very involved. In he's bet four out with the straight, and Agnieszka's raised him. It's a, it's a nice thought, but... Have to call. She has to call. Yeah. You know, yeah. to fours, and obviously I'm wrong. She took a view that uh, he might not have the straight there. Yeah. Obviously couldn't call without it. What I like about poker is it's not always the best hand that wins. So I don't think there's another card game like that in the world. So I, I like it. There's a, there's a bit of intrigue. And obviously you're playing the player and not just the cards. And uh, obviously the, the, you know, the, the mystery and having to read people. Uh, enjoy. You were definitely behind. If you weren't, you would have gone all in straight away. That's, that's straight up. Great Fish has definitely come in with a, an attitude to kind of seize the day. He... I don't want to get too carried away, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to limp in. Cool. 
He's definitely come in with an attitude of, uh, well, definitely nice chirping since he's got the chip. <laughs> because the boys in the commentary box are saying, how has he not raised with that hand? So I'm just explaining that, I, you know, I've just won a pot, oh. I'm just chilling out and taking stock in position, that's all. Check. Okay. Check. I don't like that flop. Check. <laughs> That's made a bunch Check. of trouble here. Like Ross has got the straight, and Greekfish has got a flush draw now. 6,000. Instant call. Cool. He's, he's done well not to do his best. I'll just check that they change colour. Yeah, oh, so Hold up. up before you deal, dude. Oh, that's that's it. It. If he becomes a king, though, he may do a bit of money here. You're going to have to bet the river, you know that's the only way you can win. I don't have to. Okay. Oh, wow. This <clears> is perfect for the Greekfish. I, for some reason, I thought he might have raised on that turn. He, he's, um, <laughs> this is absolutely perfect for him. He could get a bundle here, couldn't he, Neil? There's only one way for Ross is trying to decide whether to do a blocking <laughs> bet or whether to go for check call. I think he's leaning towards the blocking bet was his first instinct. Maybe 14,000? 13,000. Sorry, 14,000. Big fish. You come out betting when an ice hits the ball. You haven't got an ace, you didn't no, raise. No. You've got no Rick, respect. Rickfish will be going for a raise of maybe 20,000 more. Maybe he's got like 35,000. Not only too greedy. <laughs> he's thinking there's a <laughs> chance that Ross has got two pair here and I'll pay him off. I don't think he can spot a straight here. But. I can't see that. how that card has helped you. It hasn't. It just doesn't help you, that's all. Rickfish desperately hoping yeah. that this, is, oh this card is giving Ross aces up. And... Uh, Thing is best acting at the moment. He wouldn't. Um, you got there, didn't you? No. <laughs> you haven't. You can't lie. You know that, don't you? You can't lie. You can't lie. <clears throat> In that case, I'm raising. I don't think Ross is going to pay this bet off anyway, despite Andy's uh, Oscar-winning performance. It looked like a blocking bet from Ross. That is to say that he made a bet Agonize of an amount below the amount he was prepared to call at the maximum. He didn't really like that ace of clubs, so. Uh, Ross betting fourteen thousand. Oh, you've got to caught himself, your fingers I'd be in the prepared to call roughly sixteen to eighteen thousand. So I'll bet fourteen and hope Andy just calls, and I'll save myself money on the times I'm losing. Normally, if you make a blocking bet and you get raised, you always throw the hand away. But, and I know that on the times when I make you've a blocking no bet and call, you know I kick myself anyone. for the rest of the day. And I, think, <laughs> I don't think Ross was going to call this one somehow. Well, he can't call this one. I think. Pistols or sabres, gentlemen. Marty, Marty, <laughs> Mad Marty, clock. <laughs> the, the only clock difference please. between a map and a plan is you can throw the map out the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I've got a hand, but I don't think you've got the balls to come over me with nothing. You've got 30 seconds to act, Ross. Okay. He's taking his time with this uh, boatman, but his instinct, and I mean, the thing is, is that his hand is actually quite good, isn't it? And it's, it's sort of hidden how good it is. I think the key thing here is that when he bet 13,000 on the river, he was basically doing that because he right. was worried about this well, Ace of Clubs and he didn't three, like it. Two. He knew that the Ace of Clubs were a horrible card for him, and that's why he bet 13,000, and he still knows it's a horrible card, and that's why he's made a good lay down. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> Looking back on this hand, Neil, I, I just love the way Ross is calm, he's cool, and he analyzes the information, doesn't he? He's a cool guy, Ross, actually, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, just watching it again, it's interesting to see Andy's demeanor change throughout the hand. Uh, Pre-flop, they all limp in, and he looks a bit disinterested with the whole thing. I think he actually says, I haven't really got the hand. Uh, on the flop, he's got nothing, he's got a back door, flush door. They're all checking away, he seems quite happy, smiling away and joking and laughing. But when he, when he actually makes the nut flush on the river, he actually goes quiet. It's the first time he's gone quiet in the whole hand. He's quiet for about 10 or 12 seconds. Then he suddenly realises he ought to start saying something if he's going to try and get some action. Now he can't shut up. He never stops talking for the rest of the hand. And I mean, were there any specific things he said that put Ross off or is it a, is it a general thing? If, if you're looking at someone and trying to get a read, 
I think he just seemed so comfortable when he was talking. He, he's sitting back in his chair. He called the clock, like, after a ridiculous amount of time. Ross has only thought for maybe 30 seconds, and Andy immediately calls the clock. And he does in a friendly way. He calls Mad Marty over there. They're good pals. They know each other off the table. He's called him over. He, he hasn't got a care in the world, has he? He looks like a man who, he's desperate to get called. Was there any way to talk Ross into calling? I think it was hard to call Ross into calling anyway. I mean, Ross knows that uh, that ace of clubs looks like a horrible card. I think when Ross makes the blocking bet, he does it because he doesn't really like the situation. He's just hoping that he's, he's ahead and uh, he's got enough experience to know that he's in a bit of a bit of trouble there. I think it was very unlikely Ross was going to call, but I don't think Andy helped himself. Greek fish. Uh, when he first started playing poker, obviously um, he uh, sort of titled himself, self-titled himself after the, the devil fish, who was an early sort of poker hero of his. Now he's he's got his obviously his own thing. I've never been a big fan of people giving themselves a nickname. Actually, I think your nickname has to be given to you by other people. And it's it's almost slightly better if it's a name you're not really comfortable with or don't really like. I'm quite suspicious of people that give themselves their nickname. 8,000. Raised to 20,000. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, Carpaz is looking over there. <laughs> this is... Uh, there's a look of utter disdain there well, on Dave's face. He's, he's kind uh, of stepped out twice and he just, his timing is just terrible. It's not going great, is it? He can't actually afford to call looking at his chip stack. I'm in. All in? Wow. Well, he's made a strong play here. I have seen Ignushka um, play a couple of times before and she has shown me that she can pass hands. I think she'll figure out enough to uh, think that King Ten isn't the strongest hand in the world, and she'll she'll lay it down. The stigma of being first out, Neil, in the second level. I don't know that that will necessarily bother her too much, but uh, call. Oh wow! It's there a good go. call. It's a good call. It worked out a very good call, but I'm, I'm slightly surprised she made it. Right. So you got Jack. What's the other one got? Our bot's still a pretty good shot and a few chips back, but uh, Rylick cool. all in with the best hand here. That's given a chance for a split if the offsuit queen pops. Our bots would still rather see the heart. Oh, there it is, the heart. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Thank it you. It just goes like that sometimes, Neil. First time you you have a decision, it's a tough one, and then it's it's, it's all over. Yeah, Chris couldn't get a great deal to work with. She lost rather too many chips with a pair of deuces early on. She had a pair of eights uh, when Simon Zach found aces. Uh, and this was, I think, only the third hand she played. She made what turned out to be a really good call, and uh, she got unlucky on the river. I try, <laughs> uh, but um, I have the, my best cars was uh, part of two. <laughs> uh, this is not enough. Two and four thousand level is done, and it looks like uh, it's going to be some competition here. Simon Zach has crept back in 15 inches. Yeah, I mean, uh, we keep harping on about Simon Zach and Ross Boatman being the, the fancy runners here. Uh, they've both been bottom of the ladder and they've both been top of the heap. But I knew he thought he was winning. Well, Welcome sure back to the PartyPoker.net <laughs> World <laughs> Open 4. <laughs> Rick is playing quite right well there. with the chip. Well, he didn't bet a flop. He called a turn. Yeah, a couple yeah, of good picks up a flush. He certainly he hasn't have made too many mistakes so far. I'm such a puss. <laughs> I'm just so so impressed with your... I think you mate. I think you were miles behind, honestly. I think we can definitely tell how well Rick is. I made a genius pass, but I'm probably going to be kicking myself. I think he was praying for you to put your chips in the middle. 14,000. It felt like that. It's limp with King, Queen and Clubs. Is it the Queen on the flop and it's just come bingo, bingo. Tell you what, honestly, you guys are just different class. 
he's going to say. I'm thinking he's going to have another seven ten of arts again. And shit, I forgot you saw that. Here. Damn. Oh, Ooh, feels I'm like rising up. Hey, it's a winner today, isn't it? Feels like Ten. he just wants well, to kind yeah. of mix it up. It's a good answer today, isn't it? It's a, it's a real bad hand, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not quite sure how much the bet was. Eight thousand more cheap. on top of the yeah. six. Yeah, I guess it was he felt nearly quite nicely. cheap, but he was getting some odds. But uh, this heat. Mm. Fourteen thousand. It's kind of part of that message that you you're not going to be able to take my big blind unless you actually make a raise that. That means something. And five deuce deuce probably thinks he's ahead on this flop. And he certainly is now. Check. Check. He's going to torture Simon Zack here. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is pretty sick. <laughs> I think Simon, even Simon Zack is going to be able to extract the maximum here. Willie Hockey went back to check his cards then. With an inexperienced player, checking your cards on the river like that often 19, is a sign of a very strong hand. In his mind, he has the absolute nuts. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, well, it's just no very ads. bad news indeed for Willie Hockey. So, so. This is where a whole lot of fun kind of... Then you start to think, jeez. And Simon's like just deciding whether <laughs> if he moves all in, he's going to get paid the full amount or whether he needs to just squeeze a small amount out of him. I think if Willie Hockey, he, he, he might as well just hit him in because uh, he's either going to call or he's not. I think he's either totally bluffing or he's got a very strong hand. Zach made a clever check on the turn, but... Uh, Either way, this just kind of once the flop and then everything mm. else happened, just kind of a cold deck, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Simon Zach must figure that if Willie Hockey's going to pay him, it's because he's got a middle pair of eights or nines or something. Poor Willie Hockey is about to find out uh, cool. that oh, uh, he has cool. gotten done and dogged on this river. Oh, oh, that was a horrible situation for Willie Hockey. He's unlucky. I mean, you couldn't criticise him for calling the 8,000 raise in the first place with the King 5 to play that hand out of position. But it's tempting when he's got 6,000 invested, it's only 8,000 more. And once he saw that flop and that turn, you know, there was no way he wasn't going to be prepared to put all his money in. Loves his poker, most of it in Glasgow, uh, Willie Hockey, and he just got decked there, didn't he? I don't think Willie Hockey did a lot wrong today. Oh. He can't be too upset. I mean, obviously he can be upset about being a bit unlucky in the last hand, but uh, I don't think he can be too hard on himself. Uh, that's just a total cold deck situation. Once once he's got to the flop, I think he, he must really go broke in that hand. My emotions after going out really quite early, going out and forth, a bit disappointed. Not disappointed in the way I played and the hand that I went out on. So I think as a poker player, you always beat yourself up if you made the mistake. And, and I don't think I made a mistake, but I fully enjoyed it. It's a dodgy stack for Ross. If he, if he makes it 25, 30,000 and somebody pushes on him, Sorry. he's probably going to have to throw Jack 10 away. I'm protecting now. Uh, and uh, somebody may push on him I just thought I'd make that you know, with a relatively so weak hand. Before you rise. Like maybe uh, There's my cards. King Jack There's or King my Queen. Or There's my well, in that uh, case, he's kind of read four. his men well because it doesn't seem like Zach yes. and Garbaz have that inclination. Uh, does Garbaz it? isn't really the kind of guy to do that. Right. Zach probably right. is. Right. Uh, but I think you're right. I think in this spot, uh, against these kind of five. opponents, uh, he can get away with it. What's your range here, right? What's your range here? Before I even look at my cards, I must put you on the uh -oh. hand. Well, it, when we're six-handed, my range starts at about do seven. I know that, so yeah. Four yeah you're quite right, but... Um... Has he looked yet? Yeah, mm. I think so. I made my mind up yet. Big king, possibly a pair of sixes. Well, so I have to squeeze. I wonder if he's looked yet. No, I don't think he has, actually. I hate to do this, but I'm all in. All in? Well, Ace King, the old tournament nuts. Has to. The only correct way to play it, it seems these days, is to move all in whenever it comes to you, whatever the blinds are. <laughs> and uh, Andy knows that as well as anyone. He's going to get a dwell pass, I think, from Simon. There's like no possible chance in my mind of him calling with King 10. He's going to spend the prerequisite amount of time wishing he hadn't raised now. Yeah, it's, it's great. That's why I'm shy. Oh, I was dropped. 
It's been a big move, actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, it just oh, happened. But with that pot, Greek like Fish, of course, the first re raise, going over 200k. And now there's two players with around 100. So it's. Bit of, bit of air. It's going to change his strategy, isn't it? Just that little thing. Yeah, that was the re-raise we were waiting for. Um, we haven't had the re-raise with no real hand yet from anybody. It's on a big king. My advice for new players who are starting off playing poker and you know very small bank rolls or playing for fun possibly, be patient, look at winning players and see what the winning players are doing and then try and model your game around them. Never play out your bank roll. If you decide you're going to play for cash, play very, very small where it doesn't affect you if you lose. If it's affecting you if you lose, that means you're playing too high and you're going to get yourself in all sorts of trouble. So play very small. Rice. It feels like everybody's Rice. waiting for a bus. Rice, 25,000 total. And that's a nice bet. Bus. I'm all in. Uh-oh. I think he's getting called here. How much is it? How much has he got? Simon Zach's moving in now for over 100. Around, I think it's 112,000. And your Greek fish, uh... Maybe it's not the easiest call in the world. It's not the easiest call in the world. I think I think you made it twenty-five thousand to go. Where'd you get them chips on, dear Christ? Oh my. Yeah, you made it twenty-five thousand to go. So it's eighty-seven more. Yeah, I didn't know. I was nearly uh, instant culture. Lucky I also count. He's basically getting six to four odds. If he's up against a hand like, uh, if he felt he was up against a hand like um, King Jack, then he is six. More. He is a six to four favourite to win. Um, been here before. If he's up against I've a small pair, it's roughly 50 50 as we know. Um, 85. But he's got himself into a nice position with 250,000. He doesn't really have to jeopardise it. Right, he can fold here, have 225, and just. Sorry, genuine decision there. Pretend it's not it didn't a, happen. I think it's a tricky decision for Andy. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of re raising um, with no real hand. He's nowhere near pot committed. Um, he has played a few pots with Simon's act today, and there may be some kind of history involved. He may feel that Simon's got the needle with him. Uh, obviously, price, Simon can be making a play. If I lose, I've still got enough to, to play. Probably. Yeah, it's tried. probably he's, he's leaning towards calling, but the hand I is the kind call. of hand. He's going to call. Bit. There you go. And he'll be happy about this. Big favorite, the Greek fish. And if he takes Zach out here, he's going to go half the chips in play with three ways, which is what you want. Yeah, this is going to put him in a really strong position in the heat. Simon Zach, the rest well, uh, possibly please. the most dangerous of his opponents. Well, and uh, hell of a lot of chips What's in the that? pot. It was a good call. Don't know what the deciding factor I was. I counted that, you said oh, you've got five yeah, to come, and the ace, it. obviously, the big card that the Sorry. great fish would love. Yeah, I mean, he was he was getting Should around about six to four interest. odds. Uh, if he had a bad situation of being up against ace jack, so and we want no jack on those spades, uh, yeah. That was the only thing he was really worried about. One spade well, no on the flop for good. Simon Zach. And he like spades to dodge running spades or a jack. Oh There's the jack. God. How many times? Up the club and the ace possibility. I mean, Greek fish thinking, jeez, here we Don't go. Don't worry, so it happens to me every single TV tournament I play, so I'm glad it's gone to you at least. So I give it no emotion, but I must feel quite pleased about that draw out. Well, Neil, the five and ten thousand level was very difficult for the Greek fish. Very good for Simon Zach. Um, he's weathered it now in seven to fifteen. I have to keep saying, I think Simon Zach's an enormous favourite to win this now. I think he's, the, he's possibly the best player, and he's, he's, he's got over half the chips. And uh, certainly, Ross Boatman and David Darbaz are in one move territory. I feel, and uh, really, Andy Greek fish has not got much more than that. Pass. You were just talking about Simon Zach's inclination to play aggressive now and turn the screws. It just seems that there's an argument for him to do that more yeah, when he gets right. three handed yeah, than when it's four. Race, all in. Pass. Because if he puts 30 in, he's going to play a 100,000 pot, which he doesn't really need to. Well, you're right. Well, as it happens here, he didn't have any kind of hand that didn't come into it. And, the, and, and, and Ross is well aware of the fact that he's got to get a move on. And do something. I'm sure David knows that as well. David Garbaz. Uh This ace may he feel not be quite 
Is he called? Now. Yes, he's called. He's going to gamble. Wow. Wow. That's a, a brave call from David. I, don't know, I mean, it's turned out to be a good call. I don't know whether over the history of a lifetime that would be a good call to make. But uh, on this particular occasion, it's a good call. Yeah. I'm never an enormous fan of calling off my chips, um, although he is 60-40 in this spot. It's a big call. Big call. I certainly don't think Ross did anything wrong. Um, oh dear. David's oh dear. move was what slightly questionable. It's come all spades. Ace of spades for Garba. It's Boatman all in. Garba's is about oh, one chip behind. And the 10 or now, the actually. king. That'll be a non spade. Nice hand. Good luck, boys. Business. Plus, just seem to be about 94% here tonight. It's a great tournament, but it, it, you know, after the first three levels, it really speeds up, and you need you need to hit some cars. You know, you need to get lucky, and um, at that stage, I didn't. Right, that's my hundred. Well, safe for a rainy day. I'll tell you, if you get extra credit for working hard, man, he's, he's, you know what he'll feel like. All right. Rose. I think he's going to start to feel like maybe this is a little bit of destiny here. 37,000 total. Yeah. Nice. Rose, I'll get away from. You just did to me what I did to you before. What's that? I mean, it's sort of a raise that makes it impossible yeah, for the big Yeah, but I've got, I've got a big hand. There's a difference you never had time. 22. Again, right, Andy Griffiths telling, telling honestly what hand he had. He's also made because a raise watching which in the green room going, don't David Garbaz can't make a re-raise with calling. any you confidence. Just call him. Just call him. Uh, what position again? And Andy's going to lay it down. 15, how much more? I don't like this call from David Garbaz. I think you should have sniffed this one out, really. Oh, dear. He didn't have enough chips to make Andy lay his hand down, but he hasn't got enough chips to waste calling with Queen Ivory Flop. He's got to save his chips for getting them in first and stealing the blinds. That's his job at the moment with this stack. And trying to play pots is something he hasn't got enough chips to afford the luxury of doing. You could verbally say it, I understand. The only thing you can do now is try and win this pot by moving all in and hope that Andy's missed. And if he does that, he's out of the tournament. All in. With no look. I don't like the bet from Andy either. I, th I think Andy should have checked behind and given David one more chance to hang himself. Oops. It's a very safe flop for a pair of kings. I don't know whether he did look at the flop, but he, he certainly ought to be looking at the flop. They're paying for a quarter of a million dollars, for God's sake. <laughs> there was that great, I think there was a great moment in the Premier League a couple of years ago where Helmut did something similar to this. It went all in before in the dark, only to find out he'd flopped four of a kind. The last thing he wanted to do was to be going all I'll play, I'll play, one, of these, I'll play one of these things about a month ago, and two Jack? players didn't look at Can their hand him, until Jack? the turn. Yeah. And I had to point out to them that you are you're allowed nice. to look at your hand before the turn. And, uh, you know, no, think so. there's no act actual nice. reason nah, why course course you would want to not look at your hand before the turn. King seven? It's a horrible flop. People do make the game more difficult than it would to be. It's, it's a toss-up as to who's played this one worse. I, I, th I think David's actually um, you don't want to shaded it. Silly, He's silly. played it pretty horribly. <laughs> but I don't think Greek yeah. Fish is far behind. I can't believe David's seriously considering calling. I, I think he's just doing that thing where you kind of wish the last minute and a half hadn't happened. Thank you. There, there was a player who once asked Byron Marty Wilson how long he had to think. And Marty said... Please. Obviously, the rest of your life. Thank you. Dave Garbo's got a proper hand now, but he had to move all in. I feel with whatever hand he had. All in. He might get he might get some action here because the other two players will be aware of that, and he won't be calling with seven high. Surely he's. He's got 7,000 in the pot. He's got a player behind him, and it's 68,000 here. I don't know why he's wasting the time. Total. Sometimes you do this you know for what? the benefit Split of the I'm player. I played that, that last one so, so bad. Should have looked at the flop. Would have had your money then, not now. 
pass. Simon Zach's got an ace, and he may well call this one, I think. If he calls, it'll knock him down. Oh, about 180 or so, which is just under average. 68 tone. It looks quite yeah, relaxed. Okay. Kind of always looks like that, though, doesn't he? Do you want to call? He's, I've never seen him not look relaxed. Well, I need to double up. I've seen him in some fairly non-relaxing situations. Oh, treble up. Yeah. Must be kind of leaning more towards the fold. I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a tough fold. Well, I think Simon's, he's got a kind of meta game consideration. He, he probably feels like he ought to call and he's in good spot. Oh. But he's just worried <coughs> that he's going to lose man. ground yeah. uh, to Andy Greekfish. No, and he probably felt well, that no, he was in a good spot to win this heat a minute ago. I six, I think, seven, six. This is great news for the Greek fish, especially because if Garbots doubles up here, uh, the Greek fish will have a pretty good chip lead and be able to kind of do what he wants. Maybe, is that the metagame you're down. talking about? The advantage it gives of the player out of the pot? Yeah, I think so. I think I think Simon was was quite liking his position five or ten minutes ago, and he, he knows if he loses this one, he's already he's already he's really chop up against it again. Three, be nice. Oh. Oh. Well, Zach has gone. Call. Yeah, he's gone from hoping for the split to now thinking he's actually got some wins. The deuce, the seven, the six. There's the six. Okay. Poor old David Garbaz. Sick, yeah. Yeah, he's sick, he's sick. He's just made a couple like of mistakes today, but... Um, you know, he done it to me as well. I think he played pretty good. He, he, he can... Uh, you he can't rebuy, you've got to I know he'll be very yeah. disappointed. Yeah, I know, I know. He really it's enjoys the his TV things, and uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll be back again. <laughs> he's, he's a pleasure to watch him. I mean, he, he's clearly a man who can handle it. You know what I mean? He takes it all with a grain of salt, doesn't he? Garbaz finally got into a spot. He loved, really. Ace Queen versus the Ace Six, but that six on the river, uh, it's a big pot actually. It's absolutely gutting. Um, you know, I always tend to finish third in these things, and I know I've not really done anything wrong today. I played a solid game. Um, I'm upset. It's disastrous. <laughs> Thank you, fans, and all the this rest of it. has we been there. building. It's twenty to three. From the off, yes. on one side. Of course, Andy Greekfish, who has had this thing in the palm of his hand, let it slip away or had it taken away. Now is back in it, but still has to come through Simon Zach, who has been very steady from start to this point. Yeah, Simon Zach uh, was last in chips at one stage, and he had half the chips forehanded at one stage. So he's been sort of uh, he's been sort of up and down cool. all day. Cool. Simon Zach going for a call cool here on the button. Usually no, implies heads up that you've got a kind of an above average hand, but you're not too committed to it. But as it happens, Andy's got a very bad hand. Before the flop, he had a very bad hand. Well, this could be the end. He's now got quite a good hand. And there's a, 30, there's a flush draw for Simon Zach, which is going to be very tough to throw away. Especially, probably not to know that he's only got a 1% chance of winning this hand. This could easily be the end. Well, if Greekfish fast plays, it probably will be. You might think his hand is so big he can't fast play that Zach is likely bluffing and he's let him catch up, I which would be he, reasonable. I think, I think he's definitely going to just flat call here. And I think he's right to just flat call. He's having a little count up. But. Cool. Well, you get the feeling. You get the feeling that... that There's fish. probably not enough money in there for Simon Zach to move the whole lot in on the turn. And the ace might slow him down a little bit. I've checked. Check. Check. The diamond. The diamond's probably the only thing that's going to kill him. Yeah. Well, the way it's the way it's played yeah. out, um, the way it's played out, Simon's going to not do any more money in this hand, I suspect. Greekfish really wasn't to know. I mean, it's it's very hard to not just flat call when you've hit the flop that hard. Um, I don't really blame him for doing that. The ace on the turn has killed any chance of action, probably. And obviously he had two chances for Simon to hit a diamond and lose all his chips. 35,000. I think that'll be the end of the pot, though. 
It will give uh, it will give Andy Greekfish quite a decent lead now, and the blinds are just about cool. to go up to ten cool. twenty. For us. So Zach's called with the queen high. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's uh, that's a pretty surprising call. But, uh, no slushing. I want to say, please. Thank you. What a flop. Musa was dead. Who? Huh? Musa was dead. Possibly. I had a really bad ace. Well, do you want to go out of the tournament with that? That's what you've got to ask yourself. You know? I've not got much choice now, have I, really? Well, he's got a king, so it's all going in. There we go. He's all right. That. Rice. Must he might put the think his hand so strongly he doesn't want to put it all in. He, he you know, no. keen to get well, a double. Can't fold up. if I re -raise, so he He's might just, just contemplating whether he has to go all in. Or re raise then. There we go. He's going for less because he feels he's got a very strong hand and he and he needs the double up. As it happens, Andy's got an even stronger hand. All the money's going to go in there. And uh, Simon Zach's going to be could, about yeah. a, nearly yeah, a right. three to one chance uh, to stay in the in the tournament. Looks like a good spot for Andy Greekfish. Certainly does. Certainly feels like this. One time. A call. He's called, which cool. it must be stop and go because certainly he wouldn't give Zach a chance to win this on the flop. I mean, you got left. I mean, he's 65. Might put it. Yeah, it's a slightly pointless uh, situation. Think, yeah. The money's all going in, irrespective yeah, of the damage. flop. Simon Zach's put too much of his money in to pass, and Andy Greekfish will be offered astronomical odds and will have to call if he hasn't already moved all in on the flop. I mean, he might as well have stuck it in pre flop. Really. No, and they both hit, so there we go, just in case there was any doubt. Yeah, it's not good for Zach. It's it's not good at all. In fact, the king's no good. Only the ten will work. And Greek fish on the verge. There's only a ten in. There's no, lucky last time. I don't think there's any over outs, is there? Yeah, one all, mate. The Greek fish nice. has done it. Good luck, played. And Neil, what do you figure the biggest thing was for him to get through? You know, um, um, well, he, you the know biggest thing was probably overcoming that, that bad beat in the middle. He had a, he had a bad <laughs> oh, beat for Simon Zach. He looked like he was oh, he really rattled the by it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he I'm, sort I'm of like managed to steady himself. Still. Got a couple of good hands at that oh, time. Exactly. Uh, held himself together quite well and uh, played played really well in the heads up where uh, he probably he had a today. slight edge in the the cards, but. Uh, he certainly, he certainly played honest, the yeah, ones so he had well, I thought. It's been a long, long time coming. I, I keep on getting unlucky, really. I really do. Well, the trier is no crier. Greek fish getting through that last hand. They both, Neil, uh, hit the flop, but uh, Jax took it down. It'll be interesting to see what Greek fish will do in his first semi-final. He's fired up for the eyeballs. Well, if at first you don't succeed, just ask the Greek fish. Congratulations, uh, Greek fish, you finally done it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with my performance today. Um, after I got um, a bad beat with, with the ace jack versus ace 10, I thought, well, here we go, it's the same story. But I, I hung in and um, I got hands when I needed to, and um, I, I thought I played very well. Yeah. Did, uh, has there been any change as far as, uh, obviously you've had a couple of cracks at this and you, you seemed like you were well up for it today. Uh, mentally, did you just feel prepared or? I, I, on the way here today, I actually said to my father who drove me here, I said I'd win it today. Um, I've said that before and I've never meant it. I've never actually believed it. I, today I left my house and I actually thought I would win. But I've got to say, it's not because I was blessed with good starting hands. I thought I played well. I took my advantage when I had it, my age. Um, and I beat a very good field today, including the runner-up, obviously, Simon Zach, who I've got so much respect for. He's a great guy. Definitely dad watch. It has to have something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, so Simon, commiserations. But uh, you were really up and down there for a while, and uh, I think you occupied every, every position on the leaderboard. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got busy from the off. Uh, I, had, I had some reasonable starting hands in, in, in the beginning, and, uh, and then it all went wrong in, in, in the second level. And came back again to, to get heads up with, with great fish, obviously. But I did, did plenty of yo-yoing today. I'd just like to congratulate Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of fun there was a lot of fun banter between you guys. I mean uh, We're good friends off, off the tables and um, can I just say if there was anyone who was gonna beat me today, I would have liked it to been Simon. We're good friends, he's a lovely guy, he's Greek also. But I'd like to, you know, give a mention to the others as well. Um, the girl Agar, thought she was lovely, Ross obviously, the other guys, 
you know, we all took our shots today and every dog has his day and today was mine, fortunately. Well, I know Greg Fish, you'll be really looking forward to the semi-final. Chance to really hit the big score on TV. Best of luck. Just one name, uh, Mr. Neil Channing. The destiny will bring us together. We're both come for our semis and we're both meeting the final. Well, Greg Fish, you have some work to do first, but you're definitely in the semi-final. Smack in the middle of that $576,000 prize pool. And of course, Simon Zack, another chance in the turbos. Who will the Greek fish be beating the semifinal? Could be a naked bunch. Next time, cat girls wearing nothing but an impish grin. Will that be enough to hold off the likes of the devil fish? Hi. Should I say hi? I don't ever think about the money. I just I play because I want to win. I think everybody knows the fish is the best. I don't do turbos. I'm actually very well behaved. <laughs> we'll find out on the PartyPoker.net World Open Four.